Kenya is one of the newest and most popular alternatives to the standard way for state management in Vue 3. The official Vue X is kind of deprecated and the members of Vue suggest using Pina instead of Vue X. Therefore, in this video I will show you why Pina is such an excellent Vue 3 state management library and its use. First of all, one of the best reasons is that Pina was built up on the Composition API. Therefore, it is straightforward to use in combination with the Composition API. Furthermore, it is essential to note that Pina is modular by design. That means that your Vue application can now have multiple stores. As you might remember, Vuex has this functionality that includes modules that are relatable to the multiple stores in Pina. However, Pina allows you to easily split up your store logic and allows better TypeScript integration and code splitting. Based on those multiple stores, it is clear that you can also import and use a single store instead of all stores. Let's quickly dive into the architecture and functionality of each component of Pina. As you might imagine from Vuex, we had four different parts. The general state, mutations, actions that modify the state and get us that act as a computed property for the state. You might have noticed in your Vuex journey that these mutations are highly verbose and hard to debug. That is why the creators of Pina decided to remove the mutations and only include state actions and getters. The functionality and purpose of all three components in Pina stayed the same compared to Vuex. However, let me quickly go over the functionality of all components again. The state is your store's central part and reflects your web application state. Getters are computed properties for the state of your store and they will be necessary if you have any heavy computation. Actions are pretty equivalent to methods in components. They perform the business logic of your state and can modify the state directly. Now that we know how Pina works, let's create an example store in Vue 3. What we see here is a plain Vue 3 project. To install Pina, simply install the dependency. Next up, as you might know from Vuex, you will have to create an instance of the store that can be used throughout the whole application. We can create this instance by calling the createPina function and using the return value in the use function of our view 3 app. A common good practice is to store all your stores in a stores directory. Within this stores directory, I will create a file called counter. For this example, I would like to have a central store that includes a simple counter functionality. With Pina, we define a store by using the define store function. This function creates and returns a store. Therefore, we can feel free to export it and thus use it outside this file. Mostly, the name of this exported store begins with a use to indicate a hook that we can call. The first parameter of this function is the name of the store. After that follows an object that defines the state, actions and getters. First of all, we will define the state. To recap, the state is the central part of the store where the values are stored. It is recommended to use an error function to fulfill the type inference and TypeScript functionality fully. In this function we will return the initial key value pairs of our state. Next up, we will define the actions that manipulate the state. These actions can be synchronous and asynchronous. The actions key is an object that contains all the functions we can execute for this store. Let's define one function that increments the counter by the past value. The beautiful thing is that we can access the state by just using this and then the state key. The this keyword is bound to the store directly. Therefore, we can easily access and manipulate it. Moreover, I would like to have a function that increments the counter by one after two seconds. To not overcomplicate the asynchronous functionality, I will just use a simple timeout, but you could imagine there would be some network request instead. Next up, we have our getters. As I said earlier, these getters are computed properties. A use case would be to double the counter and return it. This computation is pretty simple, but if you have heavier computations, it is recommended to use these computed properties. That's pretty much it about defining a simple store with Pina. Clearly, that store logic can expand, but I just want to demonstrate the new power of Pina. Now we can use our defined stores. To use it, we can simply import the hook we can call to get or create the store and then access the count or call different functions. 
For example, we can directly manipulate our store state or call our increment action. Let's add some HTML and print the state count, the getter and compute the property double count and then define two buttons which call the increment action and the wait and add. As we can see, both functions work smoothly and as expected. Feel free to test out Pina and experiment with it. Thank you so much for watching and for your time. I will see you in the next episode and video.